Okay, well, good morning and welcome back everyone to the Small Business Boot Camp. My name is Faith Ritchie and I'm the Small Business Programs Manager here at the Arizona Commerce Authority, filling in for usual host Robert Theobald. Now, the Small Business Boot Camp was formally designed to assist small businesses of less than 20 employees returned from the COVID crisis stronger than ever but it continues to provide content to assist small businesses plan for success, plan for the future, and grow a thriving business. Now, for those of you who may be new, we always like to give thanks at the start of our program to our many community partners who, without their assistance and expertise, we would not be able to provide all of this great, rich content for free to all of our small business owners in attendance. Now, of course, as we already kind of chatted about the start of the Small Business Boot Camp, we also like to reinforce that it does, in addition to our weekly webinars, Tuesdays at nine, consists also of a content library and additional workshop series. Now, our content library is the recordings of more than 200 webinar sessions that also include resources and slide deck materials. So if you are looking for a new topic of assistance or you are hoping to dive deeper, you can check out the content library for those session recordings. Additionally, the Arizona Commerce Authority has other services and resources available to assist the small business community throughout the state. So whether you are looking to start, grow, or scale, there may be additional resources available for you. Through our small business services team, Arizona at Work, and the Arizona Manufacturing Extension Partnership, you can learn all of the great information about these programs on the Arizona Commerce Authority's webpage. Oops. Now, speaking of starting and operating a business, we also like to acknowledge our small business checklist. The small business checklist is an interactive and intuitive online guide to help answer all of those commonly requested licensing and permitting questions for local, state, and federal levels. So we encourage all of our small businesses to look through that checklist to make sure you are contacting those appropriate offices and taking those necessary steps for start and growth. Now here is a look at our upcoming sessions. I was sharing with Brett prior to the start of this session that we are getting ready to celebrate our 250th session at the end of the month. So we have a great lineup through the month of October from unlocking your authentic brand story, techniques to reduce stress and burnout, um, business capital with the Small Business Association, and uh, jumping into that last week of October, we will begin social media marketing with Instagram our first week. Um, Instagram marketing challenge tips for success. Uh, we are so excited for this lineup and are continuously thankful to our many community partners who have dedicated and volunteered their time and expertise to walk us through this important information. Now, of course, the reason we are all here today, I am happy to introduce Brett Gilead, co-founder and CEO of Elite Entrepreneurs. Um, Brett has joined us on the boot camp before, and again, those sessions are recorded on the content library, but here to share his presentation of navigating a hot job market. We are so excited for this topic and expertise. Of course, as always, if you have questions, please share those in the Q&A. As I have no doubt, Brett will have some engaging questions for us in the chat. So without further ado, I will turn the time over to you, Brett. Thanks for joining us this morning. 
Thank you, Faith. And it's really a pleasure of mine to be here with this group again. Uh, Faith mentioned that I've, I've been here before. I've, I, actually, this is my third boot camp opportunity. And I'm just amazed that the ACA has put on almost 250 of these now. Think about that. Anybody who has any sort of history of doing something great over a long period of time knows what a feat that is. And so it's just fun to be a part of this. I love the small business community. Um, all we do in my business is serve small business owners. We serve specifically those that are in the one to 10 million range, that seven figure audience. Uh, but whether or not you're in that range, you're going to find some help today if you have team members. Like if any of you are here as solopreneurs, I welcome you. I'll share some things that I, that I hope will serve you as you start to hire people. But today's session will be especially helpful for those who have team members uh, that you want to keep. So let me share my screen and we'll jump into my slides for today. I love that Faith opened up the possibility of having some exchange via the chat. I'm, I very much would love to have this be as interactive as possible. I know when we have this panelist attendee wall, right? We don't really get to see your pictures. We don't get to have, we don't get to have like audio exchange, but we can have Q and A. There's a Q and A button that you can use liberally. Like I'm happy to answer any questions you have along the way. We also have the chat and I'm very comfortable in these settings having a lot of engagement. So as much as you're willing to participate, I welcome it. So let's practice that, by the way. If you pull up your chat box, I'd love to know how many of you have at least one other team member, an employee. Okay, I'd like to know how many of you are employers. Um, so just you, you put Y or for yes or N for no, or you can put the number of people that you have on your team. That would give me some good context. So if you're willing to participate, if you pull up the chat box and just let me know how many team members you have or just a simple yes or no for a yes I have employees or no I don't. If you do that for me, great, thank you. Bradley, about 10 employees. Awesome, in Tucson. Okay, thank you for all of you that are participating. I see your answer, Jaime and John and Chuck. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Don't be shy, my friends, the rest of you, you're welcome to participate. That will help me as a presenter feel like I'm connecting with you. So for those of you who did do that, thank you so much. We're gonna talk about how to keep your best people. Uh, I'm gonna ask here pretty soon if you have any concerns about keeping your people. So be thinking about that. This is a, this is a message that I received from one of our members. We have a, an entrepreneur, community, a community of seven figure business owners, and we get together and we do training and we do events. And anyway, one of our members named Amy Trickett, she lives in the, in the Washington DC area. She, she wrote this one day to me, she said, I'm feeling frustrated, I had three letters of resignation in two days, trying to build something here, but can't if the bottom is falling out. Now, some of you only have a few team members. And so this may feel like the whole team is going away. Thankfully, uh, Amy and her husband, Neil, had grown their business from having 20 or 30 people to having 80 people. So three people out of 80 is much better right, than having three people out of 10 leave or three people out of five. So her business, it, it still feels painful and that's why she wrote this, but, but her business is a little more stable place than if she lost three out of five. Anyway, she's like, we're beefing up pay structure and paid time off, but we're still experiencing these losses. How do we get loyalty? Despite extensive career development, they're still going. They're acknowledging that we grew their skills immensely. Our training is what made them eligible for these new opportunities. We have this great rating on Glassdoor. Now I'm afraid to answer messages and emails. Stop the bleeding. Okay, can any of you relate to this? Pain. Any, how many of you have lost somebody in the last three months, let's say? Maybe the last three to six months. Have you lost anybody? Anybody losing people? You can use your chat. Let me know. I wish we could just, oh, Miguel, I'm sorry. I lost five. 
Yes, no, no, but can't find people. Okay, Bradley, that's fair. I hope that some of what I shared today will, you can flip over to the finding people side of things. I do have a separate training I've done on finding people during the hot job market. I'm happy to share that with you. Let me, let me throw my email in the chat here, right at growwithelite.com. I'm making this offer to Bradley specifically because he can't find people, but anybody else who wants, I, I did a whole training on how to find people in a hot job market as well. I'm happy to send a link to, to, to you of that recorded training if you send me an email. So Bradley, falls in your court on that one. Uh, thank you, Cassandra, for, for chiming in. Okay. For those of you who have lost people or those of you who are afraid of potentially losing people here, I've got some good news for you today because we're gonna I'm gonna help you. But first we're gonna we're gonna feel this pain deeply. When you lose someone, and I know you know this is true, but when you lose someone, it's sort of like lighting a flame to a bunch of Benjamin Franklins. It is so costly to lose people. It's, it's costly to lose good people. It's probably good for you to lose some, some people who shouldn't be there anymore. But you know what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the painful one. It's like, ouch, that hurt. I can't believe we lost that person. And, and why is it that it costs so much? Well, here are some of the costs. Costs of turning over good people. There's direct costs listed on the left and indirect costs listed on the right. These are some of the costs. But... The, depending on who you who you look to out there for the information, the, the sources vary, but it can be up to two to three times the annual salary of the person. That is so painfully expensive. And it and it gives, you know, it gives a little bit of meaning and numbers behind this image of burning up money. But that's the cost. Okay, so let's avoid that. Uh, before we get into how you're going to avoid it, let's just see how relevant is this really to you today. This article is, what, three months now, three months old now. So it's a few months old, I'll give you that. But this, this period of the great resignation that's happened over the last year and a half is about a record number of people that have left, left their jobs since the beginning of the pandemic. It shows no signs of abating. That's the part I want to point out, which is interesting. This is three months old now, but as of June, it showed no signs of abating. One in five workers plan to quit their jobs in 2022. So a couple of you said, oh, I've got 10 people. I've got five people. Well, if you have 10, two of them, according to these studies, plan to quit in 2022. We've still got a few months in 2022. And if there really is no signs of abating on this great resignation, this trend could continue on into next year. Although most are seeking higher salaries, over two thirds say they're seeking more fulfillment in the workplace. And I'm going to underscore that in, in today's comments. What can we do as business owners to create more fulfillment in our, in, our, in our businesses for our people? All right, so this is some of the stats, some of the facts that are out there. Here's a little bit more data. And then I promise I'll, I'll stop sharing all the ugly news and we'll get into helpful ways to deal with it. So meaning matters to employees. This is according to Price Waterhouse Cooper's Global Workforce Hopes and Fears Survey. Okay, they surveyed 52,000 workers across 44 countries. This is what this is what our our team members are responding to in, in these types of surveys. I am fairly rewarded financially. Okay, that's important to them. I'm finding my job fulfilling. Right after the the financial rewards is this idea of meaning or fulfillment. I can truly be myself, so I can be my authentic self. I'm not muted, or I don't have to change my persona when I come to work. I can be myself. My team cares about my well-being. Interesting, right? None of this has to do with perks or benefits. The financial piece is, is important. Okay, let's, we're not going to lose sight of that. But then it quickly gets into meaning and being myself, and people care about me. All right? So don't assume that you just have to throw money at this. You got to pay enough. And we'll get into that. But then there's some other very meaningful things that you can do that we can all do. This is very doable to help our people feel more connected, more, more themselves, more um, like they're, they're contributing to something meaningful. All right. 
Let's move on. So now what do we do? I mentioned, well, you, you know, you could throw a big bag of money at it and just try to keep them with, with paying more money and adding more benefits and more perks. And, you know, all of our businesses would go out of business if we responded with just throwing money at the problem. So uh, this is the last time I'll say this. You do have to pay fairly, right? If, if the going wage is $20 an hour for a particular role, and you keep insisting that you can get the right people at $15 an hour, you're, you're probably fighting a losing battle, okay? If you're, not, if you're up at $18, $19 an hour though, that might be enough if you do the rest of these things we're talking about, okay? So you, you may not have to pay at or above market wages. You gotta pay close. And, and ideally you're paying, you're able to match what the market is, is requiring, but, the good news is there's a lot you can do on top of money or in addition to money or in some, in some areas instead of money to help us keep our great people. Okay, so here's the first key. Yeah, I guess I have a little animation on this slide. The big reveal, purpose. People want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They want more meaning. We saw that in the, in the data chart. Um, so I'm curious, if you'll pull up your chat, I'm curious how many of you have a stated purpose for your business? Not, not a mission statement where we say our mission is to do this, but a why, a why behind everything that we do. I'll give you an example. In our business, our business, I, I mentioned on the front end of this call, our business is about helping seven-figure business owners go from one to three million, three to 10 million. And there's a very specific reason why I said that. There's a tripling thing. There are, there are stages from one to three and three to 10. And so we help them with that scaling challenge from one to 3 million and from three to 10 million. From about eight or 10 employees to about 20 to 30, and then to about 80 to 100, right? Like there's, there are these stages of business growth. And our purpose is to help elite entrepreneurs build meaningful businesses. That's why we do everything that we do. We are passionate about getting up on Monday morning and helping those seven-figure business owners figure out how to build meaningful businesses. So meaning in terms of their purpose, we love to help businesses figure out the purpose for their business and meaningful in terms of the scope or the scale of impact. How much ripple effect are they having in the world? How much of a dent are they making? How much good are they doing in the world? That's what we want to help elite entrepreneurs do. So that's our purpose. And our team member thrives on that. We just had a quarterly planning meeting with our team yesterday. Uh, there, are, there are six team members now. And um, I can't believe as the business owner how passionate my team is engaging about the future of our business because of this purpose. They love the purpose so much. They love our team environment that they want to contribute. They wanna make it great. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, how lucky am I that I get to work with a bunch of people who love what we are doing, the why behind everything that we're doing, love doing it with the people that we're working with. And they, they're just all in. And it's so freeing as a business owner to have people who are taking weight off of my shoulders. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about. When you feel the weight of business ownership, you wake up with it, you can't go to the, the you know, a kid's soccer game without feeling it, you can, let alone go on a vacation uh, for any amount of time without feeling that pull of the cell phone or checking my email. And, and I have a team of people who, because of this purpose, the flame of purpose is burning brightly inside of them. They love what we do and they take a bunch of weight off my shoulders. It's fantastic. So people want to be part of something bigger than, the, than themselves. If you can unlock the, the, the meaning that's behind your business or, or at the core of your business, you can get more engagement, more loyalty, more, uh, more excitement from your team. All right, uh, Bradley, thank you for actually answering my question in the chat. I love that you guys have a specific purpose. I bet that helps with your team. You already told us that you haven't lost any of them. Your, your challenge is finding people, but you haven't lost them partly because you guys are all passionate about saving the world by decarbonizing it. That's fantastic. That's a great purpose. All right, let's go to the next part of this. This is from a, a group called TTI Success Insights. You can go to their website, but they shared these stats. 
Employees who feel a strong sense of purpose when working are more satisfied with their job, 88%, more engaged, 83%, and more productive, 89%. Interestingly, employees who feel a sense of purpose feel less stress and fatigue. That should, that should catch some of your antenna, right? Your, that should land on your radar because since the pandemic through now, um, there've been a lot more, there's been a lot more stress, a lot more fatigue. A lot more people just being worn out, and it's it's emotional health that people are struggling with. But if they feel purpose, if they feel a sense of meaning, then they feel a lot less of that. Only thirty nine percent of employees who feel purpose are stressed or tired more than half the time. So there's some there's some anti stress anti fatigue benefits of having that purpose as well. Now. Bradley, and to anybody else who are having a hard time finding people, when you get a powerful purpose cranking in your business, and Bradley, you have a powerful purpose, but if there's a way to crank up the, the sharing of that, uh, whether that's through your website, through your team, through your customers, through your partners, it creates a talent tractor beam of sorts. It starts to have this effect where people who are drawn to your purpose can't help but notice it. It's sort of like putting a bat signal out there and saying, you know, we're calling all, all people who are excited about this purpose, pay attention, and they start to be drawn to it. So we call it a talent tractor beam. I think if you have this strong purpose, and I'll throw in there a strong set of values, that shared identity starts to attract people like that. So just get really explicit about what your purpose is, really clear about who the value, who the people are, or the values that you guys live, uh, what those are, are about, and that, that will become a talent tractor beam. And the more you can, you can share it, the more that that will attract the people that you're looking for. I love this quote from Simon Sinek, when people are financially invested, they want to return. That just rings true for us, right? And, and especially as investment-minded people, when we are financially invested, we want to return. Contrast that with when people are emotionally invested, they want to contribute. They're not saying, what have you done for me lately? They're saying, how can I get involved? So we have the opportunity as business owners to help people emotionally invest in something that matters to them. And again, the purpose and the values together, that, that core identity piece, that core why and, and how we get to operate with one another that creates real emotional investment opportunity for the right people. Not everyone will fit with that, but for the right people, they'll be emotionally invested and they'll want to contribute. So we need to get out of the transactional level of employment. We can't just be employers. We have to be meaning makers and team builders where people now want to invest emotionally. They're like, I can't believe I get to do this every day. That's a, different, that's a different place to come from rather than I just have a job. I need to pay the bills. What have you done for me lately, right? So they're just in it to, to punch a clock and get the paycheck. That's the financially invested level. And we need to take that deeper and help unlock something they're excited about. Now, if you feel like your business isn't very exciting, it's like, well, we are just doing a thing to make money. We're serving customers. We're making money. We're paying bills. You can, you can still unlock this purpose with them individually. You can ask them what they care about. And if you cared enough to do things that matter to them or help them realize some of their dreams, you can still get some of this emotional investment loyalty from them. Okay. I don't know if it's worth pausing that. Does anybody have any questions on this first part of purpose? Cassandra, I see your, your comment. Employees are an investment. Yes. They're definitely investment. It costs a lot of money. And there's the, like the financial piece is clear. And if we can, if we can just turn up the emotional investment of that, our emotional investment in them and their emotional investment in what we're doing, we will see the dynamic shift. Okay. So I don't know if you're having any challenges around getting your people engaged, but if we see them as employees that are just an expense, we'll treat them as such, and we'll just be at this transactional level. If we see people 
as being worth investing in, not only financially, but emotionally, they'll reciprocate. They'll, there will be more emotional investment back into what we're doing. Oh, thank you, Manny. I love that question. What is your tactic method to extract their real personal goals? So the, the, the simplest thing I can recommend here, Manny, is to have consistent, one, what I call a one-on-one. -on -one. Other people might call it something else, um, but I call it a one-on-one, -on -one, and which is just a, a for every team member that reports to me every week, I have dedicated time on our calendar. It's scheduled time, 30 minutes every week. That's their time. And during that time, I ask them about things that matter to them. I ask them about their family. I ask them, how's it going with that? They'll tell me things that they're doing, like we're remodeling a bathroom or, or you know, we've got a new puppy or whatever it is. I'll ask them about the things that are going on in their personal life because I, I talk to them about that. And then I'll, I'll ask them about things that beyond just, you know, the circumstances or the things or the relationships that are going on in their life, I'll say, so what, what is it that you want to do? What are some of your dreams? Um, you know, if you could create the perfect growth opportunity for you in our, in our business, what would you like to be doing in a few years? How can I help you get there? Uh, I love, Cassandra, your comment, powers of observation, right? So when you, when you care enough to get curious about other people's lives, you just start to observe things that seem to matter to them. Or, you know, if they go on a vacation, you say, oh, tell us about your vacation. And they light up about something. Maybe they like to go collecting. <laughs> I'm using a silly example here, but I, I know there used to be people who would collect spoons everywhere they went. And they had like a, a display of all the, the places they went were just, a, you know, a framed wooden thing of spoons. And whatever it is that they care about, you just start to notice and you just get curious and you care and you ask. So. Manny, I think you can just start to ask them what they care about, what they want to do with their life, things that really matter to them. You can have them create vision boards. You could have like a team building exercise where everybody creates a vision board for themselves and, and maybe shares a few, share a few of the key items on there with one another. It's a way to, to, to build some connection and, and some sharing on the team. So I hope that was helpful. I'm, I, and I love the questions. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to do some exchange with you guys. Okay, so purpose was the first key. I'm going to share three keys with you. Growth is the second one. How interesting that we were just talking about that a little bit. There's an innate desire in, in human beings to learn and develop. So yes, they want to be attached to a meaningful purpose that we share as a team, as a business. We have this meaningful thing that we do every day for work. But then there's also this, I want, to, I want to grow, I want to learn, I want to develop. I want to become more tomorrow than I was today. I want to be more today than I was yesterday. So there's this feeling of progression that people like to have. And we can facilitate that in our businesses and it will help us keep our great people. Many, many years ago, and it's gotta been, it has to have been like 10 or 12 years ago now, I, I went to Zappos with the CEO of a local company here that used to be called Infusionsoft and now it's called Keep. Anyway, his name is Clayt. And Clayt and I, we went to Zappos because we were building a really fast growing business. We grew from seven figures to a hundred million within a few years. Um, well, it was, a, it was, let's say four or five years. Anyway, it was a fast, it was a fast ship. It was a rocket ship. And so we were going out to other businesses, learning how to keep our really great culture as we grew. Because we were growing fast and we had an amazing culture and we wanted to keep it that way. So we went to visit Zappos. And I wanna share a few ideas with you about growth that I learned from Zappos. One of them was very simple. We walked into the, you know, the front entryway of their business and they had this library. And this library had all these really cool books on it, but the, the books, were for, for guests, anybody who wanted to could take one of these books off their library. But more important than just being an impressive thing for visitors to see, it was a book of, a, sorry, a library of books for their team members. And their team members were learning from these sources of truth, right? These were their sources of truth that helped reinforce key ideas in their culture. And it helped to it helped to have the feeling of progress or learning and development with their team. 
I thought it was a very cool thing that they did. So how do you right size this idea? Because at this point, you know, they probably had a thousand people. None of us have a thousand people on this call. At least I didn't see that in the chat. But what can we do? We can grab really cool books like this one. I just happen to have this on my bookcase right now. It's called The Everyday Hero Manifesto. Okay, The Everyday Hero Manifesto by a guy named Robin Sharma. Love this book. It's fantastic. It's a great entrepreneurial book. Well, some of your team members might appreciate it. Maybe they wouldn't appreciate this one, but maybe they'd, they'd appreciate something like Fish, this one here that I'm sort of circling with my mouse on the screen. Fish is about uh, a fun fish market. Some of you have heard of this, the Pike's Place Fish Market in, in the Seattle area. And they have this really cool customer uh, centered engagement process that they, they do a lot of play with it. They throw fish around and they're interacting. They're, they're making the fish's mouth move and talking to customers. And they're just having fun in this otherwise smelly, you know, fish marketplace. Uh, but they've turned it into an experience that the customers enjoy. And so you could, you could share a book like that with your team. So you could have like a monthly book club where you just provide a book to everybody. And it's, it's reinforcing key messages that you want to share but it's also helping people grow and learn. So that's an idea, okay? Also at Zappos, they had this really cool thing. And, and, and again, this is a bigger idea for a company that has more money, okay? I'll acknowledge that. But the principle behind it, we can all take the principle behind it and apply it in some way that fits our current team size and budget. All right, so here was the idea. This was Dr. Vic. He was sort of like a life coach that they had hired internally to talk with their team members. So team members would come in, they would sit in the chair. They were royalty at that, at that moment. And if there was a little uh, crown to go with it, you sat in the chair. So visitors could sit here as well. And then they would take these little Polaroid shots and they would wallpaper the space with all the royalty of their, their team. They would say, you are royalty, you are, you are amazing. And this life coach would help them with their mental trash, right? They would help them spin it to win it he, he would call it spin it and win it. So take, take current circumstances, thoughts that you're having. Let's spin those thoughts in a positive way. Let's reprogram the way we're thinking so that we can win and have more happiness and joy and fulfillment in our life. So you can't all afford to hire a life coach for everybody on your team, but you can take some of these principles and apply it. I was sharing with Manny earlier that I highly recommend a weekly one-on-one. -on -one. In those one-on-ones, we talk about personal things, yes, but we also talk about how things are going in their role and how I can support them in that. And I, and I spend a little bit of time coaching them when necessary or when they, when they want it. I don't force coaching on them, but where, wherever possible, I'm reinforcing positive thinking. I'm, I'm coaching them in their role. I'm trying to give them advice uh, if they want my help. So I don't have a life coach on staff. There's six of us. I don't, I haven't paid to, to hire a life coach, but where possible, I'm helping my team think about things that are tripping them up in their thinking. And I'm, and I'm helping to reinforce the great things that, you, that they're doing every single week in our one-on-one -on -one time together. Okay. Another idea we got from Zappos. Well, several ideas. I wrote some notes here. Uh, I talked about the library. I talked about you are royalty. In addition to that, they invested in a little, you know, we don't really use physical planners anymore with all these phones that we have, these digital devices, but the idea was really powerful for me to see that they were investing in a, a vision planner. This is like a life plan slash a time management tool to help their people be effective in their own life. So what can we do to help our teams, our, our team members, our people be more effective in their life? whether that's helping them think through their finances, helping them get out of debt, helping them pursue that dream vacation, helping them think about how to manage their time better, whatever it is, if we can help them be more effective in their personal life, they will be more effective in their role with you and they will feel like they're growing and that will make them more loyal to you and what you're doing. For this cool pipeline team, we, again, us smaller businesses, we can't afford to hire a pipeline team, but thinking about how to help people move through a talent pipeline, that's the visual. How do I move people from starting with us to being more and more valuable for us and more and more valuable in their future? 
whether that be with us or somewhere else. And then they, I love this one. I'm going to share one more visual. Progression broken down into smaller parts. Let me give you a visual on this one because I love this concept. And Zappos was really smart. This is the visual I found, but this is the principle that they taught. Many of us say, hey, you're a, you know, let's say you're a junior graphic designer and you want to become a full-fledged graphic designer or someday a senior graphic designer. Well, today you're here. The next, the next role is up here at this, you know, you're down here on the ground. The next role is maybe three years away. There's a, there's a, a nice salary bump, but you're going to have to earn that. That's, this is the traditional way. It's a few years down the road, road for you to go from graphic designer to senior graphic designer or from technician, tier one support rep to you know, tier two support rep. That's probably a few years away and then there's this pay opportunity. That's too long. It's too far away, it's too big a jump. And so what we wanna do in our roles is design little steps to go from where we are to that place. The destination is still the same. I want you to see that. The destination is still the same and probably the same time frame to get to this place. However, we've built in several steps in between that give people the sense of progress more frequently. Okay, so if you go from junior graphic designer to graphic designer, and this pay here is 40,000 a year, and this pay here is 50,000 a year, you can go, let's say every six months, you can go from, let, let's call it junior graphic designer one, to junior, gra junior graphic designer two, to junior graphic designer three, to graphic designer one, to graphic designer two, to graphic designer three, right? Like there's ways to put steps in between. And even if you don't wanna change the job title, you can still say, hey, when you get these new experiences or you pass these certifications or you go to this training or you produce this amount of additional work or this higher quality of work, then I'm gonna move you up in pay. Instead of making a jump from 40 to 50, Maybe the jump is from 40 to 42, and then from 42 to 44, and then 44 to 46. And they're more frequent changes instead of one big change after they've earned the whole thing, okay? And I'm sorry if I'm belaboring this point. It may seem like very elementary and I'm going on too long, but I felt like this was magic when I saw it. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You solved an age old problem. Some of us think we're doing people a favor by giving them a big bump after a few years. What we're doing is delaying the sense of progress that would keep your people feeling like, I am doing something here. I'm growing, I'm learning, my pay is going up. So we're, we're gradually doing it. It's no, it's no different. It's the same amount of progress, the same amount of pay over the same amount of time. It's just that we broke it up into smaller pieces and we gave people the gift of feeling that sense of progress as it's happening, okay? Any questions about that before we go on to the, I think I have another quote here. Just, just a reminder, Amy was like, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm, I'm, tr I'm training them up and then they're going somewhere else. Well, you can feel like, why bother training them? They'll just go somewhere else. But this is what Henry Ford says to that. The only thing worse than training your employees and having them leave is not training them and having them stay. Think about that. And I know you've all heard something like this. There's another one like this a little bit later that I'll share. Whoever said this or something like it, the truth beneath it rings crystal clear to those of us who, who can hear it. If we have them stay and not train them, then we're just holding back our business's progress. If we train them to be amazing and they provide more and more value to us and then they choose to leave, I'd much rather have that happen than to have them stay very complacent, very mediocre, very stagnant and have them stick around. That is not serving us. Okay, So we got to get into a mindset of I'm growing people. So we provide a, a significance to them, a purpose, meaning, right? That's key number one that we talked about. Then we help them grow. When we help them grow, they feel connected to us. They feel we, we they see that, like, oh, this person actually cares about my value and, and then they're investing in me. And then they, they will stay, they're more likely to stay if you're doing some of these other things along with it. All right, the last thing is connection. 
People need personal connection. That's one of the deepest human needs is to be loved. If any of you are parents, you know that the very best way for you to have any influence with your, your children is for them to feel love from you. Not judgment, not disappointment, not you know constantly showing them the ways that it can be better, but just accepting them, loving them. And, and even though they're adults and they're your employees and team members, I mean, they're not your kids. And I don't need you to think of them as your kids, but they're still people. And there's this deep human need to be loved or to belong. And you have an opportunity to create that for them. I know a lot of us grew up in business or grew up before we owned business thinking, you know, work and personal life is just separate. We don't need to care about these people in their personal life. Let's just stick to the task. Let's just do the work, people. And you, you can run your business that way, but you will never engender the kind of loyalty and engagement and high levels of performance that I'm talking about, especially in a hot job market. If it's just transactional, if it's just pay for performance, they'll go to whoever's paying the highest. If you want to get beyond that, you've got to figure out how to engage with them on a human level and say, you matter to me. You matter here. The purpose, what we're up to, the meaning that we're doing, that's, that's, that matters, and you should care about that. The growth, the development, the progress that I'm going to help you do while you're here, that matters, and you should love that. And now this connectedness, like you belong here, and we care about you. And, and whatever team member connection you can help foster. Now, I'm not talking about creating cliques or unhealthy gossip or, you know, that kind of, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about healthy connection where, where people feel like each other matters. And as a team, we're going to get through hard things in the business and in your personal life, right? We had a team member recently who lost her mother and, and the rest of us mourned with her. It was sad that she lost her mother. And I know all of you would, of course, you would feel bad for your team member who lost her, their, their parent or loved one. Um, and so maybe that's a bad example. All, all of us are going to do that. But there are other things going on in people's lives. And when we, sh we show we care, it matters to them. This team member who lost her mother, uh, let, me, let me show you this, this thing, and then I'll, I'll explain that example a little bit further. I believe that you as a business owner are, you can call yourself an owner. You are the owner. You can call yourself CEO, president, founder, whatever you call yourself. But behind each of those labels, I'm going to apply one, and, and that is the label of leader. And some of us, especially if we have five, six, two, three people, 10 people, we're like, I, I don't have to feel like a leader. I can just be a business owner, and these are my employees, and that's that. They do a job, and that's that. But I promise you, if you'll take, if you'll take this leader role on fully, and you'll do what you need to do to set the vision, which is your number one responsibility as a leader, by the way. And you'll, and you'll intentionally build the team and you'll set up the processes and systems and all the mechanisms to deliver results. You will be more effective as a leader. And then your, your effectiveness will go exponentially higher if you'll have care at the center of all of that. You could be the perfectly tech, you know, the technically perfect leader. You could be technically perfect in setting the vision, delivering results and building the team. Without care, you won't have as much influence with your team. They won't want to follow you as much. You might do all the right things, but they may not be ready to follow completely. So care is right at the center of it. Now, here's the example. Team member lost her mother. Um, the mother, mother was alone. There was no spouse no significant other. So this team, other, team member has a brother. So it's just her and her brother dealing with all of the estate affairs and trying to figure out what to do with the house and the car and the funeral and pay for this and take care of that, right? All these details to manage. And the team member, those of you who live in the Phoenix area, the team member lives down in the, in the Southeast Valley, the Chandler Gilbert area. And the mother who passed away lived in Sun City, okay? Way opposite ends of the valley. And so she's having to drive out there and take care of things at the house and with the car and with paperwork and credit card bills and like all this stuff, right? 
she she wants to be mourning her mother, but she's dealing with all these details. So one day she was busy doing work for us from her home office and somebody needed to take her mother's ashes. Her mother was cremated, needed to go pick up her mother's ashes in Sun City or there close by and, and get them back to her house. And so there, there was this big disruptive thing that was gonna happen in her schedule. And, and it was just a big to do on top of everything she was dealing with. And one of, one of our team members, my assistant, okay, at, at my uh, other team members encouragement said, hey, my assistant, her name is Callie. Callie, it would be so helpful if you could drive to the, the you know, the mortuary, I guess, is where it was, where her mother was cremated, pick up her ashes, deliver them to Miranda. And that's what she did, right? On work hours, right? You, you got to stop thinking about work hours and the hourly rate. And you got to start seeing people and caring, caring about them that way. That, that connection that bonded, or that, that connection bonded our team together in a way that I couldn't, I couldn't create this stuff, right? Like life happens. You don't have to go looking for opportunities to create connection. Usually life is happening. And so we provided dinner for this team member. One of the team members went and picked up the ashes. The other team members said, you know, we should, we should get some flowers or something. Like, and, and we just rallied around this team member and said, we care about you as a person, not just, I'm sorry for your loss. Let's get back to work, right? And I, I, I'm being a little facetious with the egregiousness of that example, right? But there are opportunities all around to help people. People have needs. All of us have needs. If we just notice them, we can step in and show a level of care that most of these people have never experienced, sadly. And, and do you think my team member is going to take another job for a 10% raise when she knows that this team here cares about her at a level that she's not going to be able to find somewhere else? Okay, that, 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 that is difference-making kind of care. And when you couple it with progression, right, or development, growth, and you couple it with purpose, I'm, I, I hope I'm starting to paint a picture how these three things are really powerful, non-financial hooks. And I don't, mean, I don't mean that in a negative way, like we have our hooks in people, but it's more like we're wrapping, we're wrapping our arms around people and saying, the work we're doing really matters and you matter and your growth matters. Let's, let's do something really meaningful here together. That just creates a different dynamic with your team. All right, so I've already talked about one-on-ones. I, th I think they're a must, especially uh, you know, it, through the pandemic, through the great resignation, people just need to be seen. They need to be heard. They, need to, they, they have a lot of the mental and emotional health things going on right now. And while that feels in the old way of leading, that felt overly personal, like that's not what we're doing here. You keep that at home. We do this at work, right? We separate home and, and work as much as we can. Those, those things are coming together in a way that we can't reverse. And I don't think we should. I think as leaders, we should really embrace the fact that our personal life and our work life is coming together. Not in, not in selfish business owner ways. I don't mean like, oh, great, now they can work more. I don't mean it that way. I mean, let's care about the whole person in a way that acknowledges a, the lines are a lot more blurry between checking email and, and you know, staying connected with people I care about on social. Like all of, all of those things are happening real time all the time. My, my team works probably harder now than they ever have but they don't feel resentful about that. And I give a lot of flexibility to them around dealing with things that they need to deal with in their personal life, whether that's picking up their kids from school at a certain time each day, and then having them plug back in and taking care of stuff after that, right? So I, I'm doing lots of things to help them feel like real people who are cared for and that they get to be involved with something bigger than just doing a job for money. So that's, that's what I was hoping to share with all of you today. They need to know that you care. Hopefully they care for each other on the team as well. It's not just you caring for them, but that you've created an environment where people care for each other. 
Okay, if you are losing people or you lose somebody soon, I want to introduce the idea of the silver lining. Sometimes, as hard as it is on us, and as much as that burning money thing is real, the, the cost is still there, sometimes we actually get somebody better to replace the person that left. And so when you lose somebody, and sometimes you will, let's look for every opportunity to upgrade who we had in that role. Let's find somebody better, who's better in skill, who's better in fit with the team, who's just overall better, who's more excited about the purpose. Like we need, we need to up-level our team. We can do that by growing the current team members and we can do that by up-leveling through hiring. We can get better people in. Okay, if you are losing great talent and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're losing my best people. Please take advantage of the opportunity to ask them questions as they're leaving. For whatever reason, they weren't comfortable telling you while they were here still, but they take their guard down when they leave. And you need to go in there and sincerely ask, say, hey, I, I'm still having a hard time believing that we lost you. Like you are the type of person I never want to lose please help me not lose somebody like you again, right? Please tell me what I could be doing differently. We gotta, be, we gotta go into those, those sessions with a lot of curiosity, with a lot of sincerity, and just really dig in and say, what happened? What could I have done? What could I have prevented, right? Like maybe, maybe there's a toxic person on the team that's causing your best people to, to leave. And if, as long as that person, that other person's there, you're going to keep losing good people, right? And maybe you don't know this. Maybe it only happens kind of peer to peer and you never see it. You've got to, you've got to figure out what's causing problems in your team or in your business and, and change it so that you can keep your best people. All right. I shared a quote from Henry Ford earlier. Here's one from Richard Branson. Train people well enough so they can leave, but treat them well enough so they don't want to. That's kind of my challenge to you between the, the growth key and the connection key. If, if they're growing so that they can leave, but they feel cared for, they treated so well, there's so much connection with you and other team members that they, they don't ever wanna leave. Some of you may have noticed my shirt. I don't know if you could see the, the type, uh, the, the lower print, but it says this message, the best leaders build the best businesses. On the back, it says, and the best businesses win. I inserted for this training, this bolded section, section of one person at a time. We have to lead one person at a time. And I know we don't have a lot of time in our day, but I know that if you will take the time, make the time each week to spend individually with people, to help them feel more connected to a meaningful purpose, to help them feel like they're growing and that you're supporting their growth, and to help them feel like they're cared for, that there's connection with you and other members on the team, you will see a rise in engagement. It'll come with more performance, by the way. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about keeping our best people. You will keep them and they will perform better for you. It will happen. So it's funny, you can't go into this selfishly thinking, I'm gonna get more performance, so now I'm gonna try to treat people well, right? You can't go into it that way. You gotta care enough to treat them well and care enough to develop them and care enough to help them connect to deep, deep meaning, more purpose in your business. And then when you do that, you will see performance improvements. So it will come back around in terms of growth for you. All right, if you have five or more employees and you want a thought partner on any of this stuff, that's all I do every day is I serve seven figure business owners. I would love for you to schedule a call with me I don't know, I, I guess I can throw this in the, in the chat box. Let me do that right now. So you have access to it before you leave. Right in the chat box, I'm gonna throw this link. There you go. If you have five or more employees, and I'm, I'm only saying that because if you have fewer than five employees, most of your time and energy needs to go into sales and marketing and improving your customer fulfillment stuff. Uh, if you have fewer than five employees, you're like, no, but I really still need to talk to Brett. Fine, you can talk to me. But I know if you have more than five employees, you're approaching that seven figure mark or you're at seven figures or higher. Um, that's all I spend my time doing is helping business owners like you with things like what we talked about today. Getting more clear, getting more aligned, creating a better culture, rising to new levels of performance. And I would love to be able to help any of you with those things. 
So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to turn it back over to Faith. It's been my pleasure to spend this time with all of you. Sincerely, it's been it's been a lot of fun. So thank you for investing some of your time with me today. And I hope that that something was helpful there. Excellent. Thank you so much, Brett. And I just appreciate this conversation so much on a personal and professional level. And so it's just so nice for that connectiveness really being preached um, for the empowerment for communities and business. So we do have just a few minutes. So if you do have some last minute questions for Brett this morning, please share those in the chat or Q&A. And we'll just kind of see if there are any other questions out there. As always, today's session has been recorded and we will share that recording on our content library. So if you want to revisit some of these resources and tactics that Brett shared today, you can do so later this afternoon. Now, I don't see any additional questions, just some thanks and kudos. So I'm so happy you all enjoyed the session as much as I did. Brett, thank you again for your time this morning. It's always a pleasure to have you join us. And so three is the charm for us. To have yeah, maybe you that's here. it. Three times the charm. I'm, I'm, I'm not coming back. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Come well, back as often as you'll have me. I love it. Yes, please. We will. <laughs> so thank you, Brett. And thank you all for joining us this morning. I hope you all have a great day. We will be back here next Tuesday at 9 a.m. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining. And thank you again, Brett. You're welcome. My pleasure. We'll see you later.